There's seven games into spring ball, and then everything gets on pause, and you're rolling. Um, but then you just say, you know what, it's like anything else in life, you adapt. How confident are you that we're actually going to have football this season? It's been unpredictable. Nobody's known what was coming next. And I think it was the same way for Jordan. It was the same way for me, for his mom. Uh, and obviously for the Pac-12. Just hours ago, the Pac-12 announced it would be postponing all fall sports. Stories will be told about who we were at the beginning of 2020. But history books will be written about who we were at the end. How we worked how we live, how we grew, will truly be what sets our legacies. Be diligent, make it important, because this you changed us all. What's it like, man? You, you're at home, you're training, you, you understand, though, that, you know, you, you're trying to get ready and be prepared for a season. What, what's your spirit like? What's your thought process in knowing that you're supposed to be at school, you're supposed to be with your team, but now you're at home and you have no idea whether or not you're going to have a season? Um, well, my spirit and my thought process in a situation like that is um, it was in a good place. For, for sure, because for me, um, I, I grew up in an NFL household, so I watched my dad train by himself without his team for 13 years. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be with your team all the time to be doing things that are going to help y'all win ultimately whenever the season does start. So I was in a good place. You know, I knew my teammates were working, and you know, I just wanted to do my part so I could be the best football player I could be. So when I got back, I'd be ready. <laughs> that's it. Very good. Very good. Good. That's it. Stay locked in. Eyes low, Jordan. Eyes low. That's it. Shoot down. Oh, shoot it quick. Shoot it quick. That was good. Good. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Now, what you do, though, that was smart. Because you've seen him enough, right? Because you've seen him enough, you got to Jay. You know, he hesitates a lot, so you waited, right? You were patient. He got off. He got to the release. You shot your hands. That's the point we got to get to, right? When we're watching guys and we see them, we know, all right, this dude here plays a lot at the line. He's going to hesitate and try to create space. I'll jam the release, right? You be patient on a guy like that because they got to come to us. At some point, they got to come to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Very good. Very good. Hey, thank you. Right. You get to the guy that's give you a lot. Middle school, 
age very deciding. This is something that he really wanted. And that's when he started working towards this goal. And so he works through high school, getting up at 5 a.m., working out before school, then going to practices after school, and that being his schedule. And then he finally get the opportunity to play college ball, which was his dream of what he had been working towards all this time. And then he gets hit with an injury, which it happens. Injury is part of sports. We work him through that. We coach him through that. His dad coaches him through that. And then he finally is back and ready. And 2020 hits, and it's just another hurdle that he has to cross. So you get, you get the players back on campus in June. They start working out. Um, at that point, did you truly believe there was going to be a season in 2020? Yeah, I thought it was going to be a season. You know, when you saw what happened with basketball, how they were able to create that bubble, the NBA said, okay, hold on, this can work. Then you said, oh, well, how do we do it? They're billionaires, you know, <laughs> we're college university. How do we handle it? And then when we got going, it's like, okay, it's kind of working. And then when things start falling apart and you saw, you know, certain conferences talk about pushing back to the spring and then high school football getting pushed into the spring, you said, okay, hold on, this is getting real now. But like everything else is after, you just move ahead, right? You don't look back, you just keep stepping and going through the process. But then when it all finally hit and um, we got postponed, it, it was shocking because we were rolling, guys were excited, and hey, we're going to do it. And then all of a sudden, boom, here it goes again. The second time in 2020, we get shut down. Ryan's son Jordan and two of his Arizona State football teammates say they were called a racial slur at a Whataburger near campus. Now, due to the pandemic, this is what happened. The drive through was the only way to order. Jordan Clark says they asked a woman driving her car if they could give her money to buy food for them. She said no because she was in a hurry. Another customer agreed to buy it for them. But while they waited for their food, Clark says, quote, the woman that, that we asked initially eventually got to the window and proceeded to roll down the window to ask what our problem was. We were sitting on the wall. She then filed a complaint with the manager that we harassed her and, we, and he comped her meal. She then turned to us and said in a vindicated voice, she said, thanks for the free food, N-word. Now Clark goes on to say the store manager gave her the food. She began to dry off, drive off while saying bye, N-word. The manager was unfazed. He was quick to condemn us and tell us we were wrong, quick to threaten us and say he'd call the police. Now Whataburger has released a statement saying, quote, we do not tolerate racism and we're horrified to hear how these customers were treated by another customer. We are reinforcing training with our employees on how this incident was handled and apologized to the players and their families for this terrible experience. Ryan Clark is back with us. Ryan, to see this happen to your son, you know, I don't mm -hmm. even want to ask a question. You're a member of our family here. The floor is yours. Yeah. Well, I think... Um you initially, the first thing is, you know, as a black man and the father of a black young man, I'm happy he's alive, period. That, that was, that was my, my first thought. And then that immediately turned to anger. And what's crazy is I wasn't mad at the young lady or the woman. I wasn't mad at the manager. I was mad at myself. I was mad with Jordan. And I'm not necessarily sure that that's the right emotion to have, but nothing pisses me off more than being scared. And even though I knew the moment was over, I was still in that moment as his dad. I was still picturing, as I'm reading it, I'm still picturing, picturing what's going on and I'm playing out other scenarios in my mind. I'm playing out a scenario of if this woman would have had a weapon and she could easily say that these three young black men were threatening her. One of Jordan's friends is a tight end. He's extremely tall. He's a thicker kid. And I believe that if that woman pulls a gun on those young men and if that woman pulls the trigger, I believe that she's never punished. I believe that justice is never served. And even if justice is served, it's not enough to bring my son back. But this isn't just a fear for me every day. This has been a fear for black people forever. My father called me to check on me last night. He obviously called Jordan the day before. And there's a story my dad has been telling around me forever. And we actually laughed at it. And it takes on new meaning for me. When 19, 1977, uh, my father was at a fast food restaurant. Uh, 
with his girlfriend. His girlfriend at the time, and I know we're trying to get rid of colorism, was a fairer skinned woman, but she was black. But to the white guys in there, she was a white girl. And so they start harassing him and they're using racial slurs and calling him an N word. And so they attempt to jump my father. And so he jumps behind the counter and he's looking for something to protect himself with, but it's a restaurant. And all they had was plastic utensils. And we would laugh about that story and laugh about that story. But he said, he said, I never thought that this many years later, my grandson would be experiencing the same racism that I did. And so where we are in a point to where people are starting to listen, where people are starting to understand who didn't understand before, I believe that the true racists, the people with true hate in their heart are starting to feel a little bit of the power that they felt over the last few years slip away. So they're gonna double down on their racism. They're gonna double down on their hate. They're gonna double down on their evil. And that's what this woman did. And at the end of Jordan's statement, he kind of lists some of the things that he thought about himself and said to this woman, I was none of those things. His entire life, he has grown up as my son. And it was my job to put him in better situations than my parents could put me. So he grew up in very affluent areas. He went to schools that were predominantly white because those were the schools that I felt could give him the best opportunity to succeed. But he was always treated as Ryan Clark's son. And he's faced racism and he's heard the word, but it never affected him in this way. And I felt like I didn't prepare him for this situation enough to know as a black man, you can't walk up to cars. You can't wave down cars with white people in it because your life is not of value to all of them. And so um, I, I'm, 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 I'm blessed that my child is still here. I um, like it's something would have happened to him that would have broke me. And so for me, I got to do a, a better job of, 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 of educating him and I got to protect him because because I, I wouldn't know how to live if he would have made it out. And so thank you for everybody that reached out to me. And um, like, I know it's getting better, but it's not better, better yet and better for everybody. And, um, you know, like we just got to keep, you know, staying together, man, and just doing what we can.